Yo, what's up guys, it's Rob, and today we're going to be reviewing the Vaxi Outset AX. This is a $60 mouse released quarter run of 2021. I have added this mouse to my mouse review sheet, link to that is down in the description. I add all the info of every mouse I review into that sheet, and I do keep adding info about the mouse. So if I find out new things about the mouse or anything like that, any new info, on every mouse that I have reviewed, it is up to date and I try to keep it up to date as much as possible, especially if I have more experience or just time with the mouse. I tend to update my mouse review sheet, so definitely check it out. And I will be adding gameplay at the end of this video that I got with this mouse, so stick around for that. But yeah, like I said earlier, this is a $60 mouse that has an ergonomic shape that is very, very similar to the Zowie EC2 shape. It's not the exact same shape, but it is almost a clone. So for all you Zowie EC2 lovers, definitely stick around for this one because you might really be interested in this mouse. So on my scale, the mouse comes out to about 79 to 80 grams. I would definitely still consider this a lightweight mouse. A lot of people are really crazy when it comes to weight, but honestly at 80 grams, it didn't affect me in game or anything like that. I played just as well as I do when I use a mouse that is extremely light. The sweet spot for me really is around 60 to 80 grams. And well, this one is just at 80 grams and I find it perfectly fine and had no issues at this weight. The mouse does not have software, but you can change the DPI and the pulling rate and the liftoff distance all without any type of software. The DPI and pulling rate is at the bottom of the mouse, but the liftoff distance can be changed by disconnecting the mouse, then while the mouse is disconnected, hold mouse 1 and mouse 4, hold it down and then plug in the USB to connect the mouse, and then let go and that will be the low liftoff distance setting, which is the default setting on the mouse. Then for the medium liftoff distance setting, you would disconnect it again, then while the mouse is disconnected, hold mouse 1 and mouse 5, then connect the USB into your computer and then let go and then that is the medium liftoff distance setting. And to set it to high, you would once again disconnect the USB or the mouse from your computer, then hold down mouse 1 and mouse 2 and mouse 4, then plug it in, then uh, let go of all three and that will be the highest liftoff distance setting. I'm not sure why you would want to go to the medium or high liftoff distance setting, but that is how you do it. And by default, the mouse is already set to the lowest liftoff distance possible, which is always a plus. It's really awesome that this can be done without downloading any type of software or anything like that. So huge props to Vaxi for that. So now for the shape of the mouse. When I try to palm the mouse and completely lay my fingers and entire palm on the mouse, I am able to palm it, but as you can see, my middle finger does overlap mouse 2 here. If I were to just curl it a bit, I can kind of like relax claw, I guess you could say, the mouse, which feels awesome when gripping this mouse. I am kind of palming it, but it's just my fingers are curled on mouse 1 and mouse 2. And it is extremely comfortable and I had no issues with this type of grip. My main grip style, however, is claw grip. And just like with palm grip, this worked really well and was extremely comfortable. Both of those grip styles at my hand size worked really, really well. And I really had no complaints using those two grip styles at my hand size. And now for fingertip grip, I really don't think fingertip grip is ideal for this mouse. This is mainly because of the hump on the left side of the mouse when trying to fingertip I would sometimes end up touching the back of my palm and not just my fingertips. Maybe if you have bigger hands, you might be able to fingertip grip this mouse much better than I can. But since my hands really aren't that big, that is most likely why I was touching the top shell with other parts of my hand other than just my fingertips. So yeah, palm with my curled fingers and claw grip were ideal for me at my hand size. And well, my hand length is 17 and a half centimeters long, and the width of my hand is 9.5 centimeters wide. So now for the coating of this mouse. This mouse actually has two different types of coatings and or textures. As you can see, mouse 1 and mouse 2 are very similar to that of the Zygon NP01. It has a slightly, very slightly rough texture to it. 
It feels great and I really had no issues with this type of texture on my Mouse 1 or Mouse 2. Mouse 1 and Mouse 2 feel pretty grippy with this textured coating. However, the rest of this mouse does have a different type of coating and or texture. This is definitely a much better coating compared to what was on the NP01, so it has been improved. I live in Texas and I also have extremely sweaty hands, so coating is a pretty big deal for me. And it's always humid and hot here in Texas. So I do sweat a decent amount sometimes when playing video games. So when I just start playing and I hop on to game, when I'm like not even sweating at all, the coating of this mouse is extremely grippy and it feels really really good. It feels great when holding the mouse, I don't get any slipperiness or anything like that. I get a lot of grip and it feels awesome. But when I start sweating and I have a good amount of sweat on my hands, it does get pretty slippery which is very unfortunate. The NP01 coating just felt bad overall whether or not I had just started the game or I was sweating. But this one feels great when I initially start gaming, but once I've been gaming for a while and my hands start to sweat a bit, that's when the coating kind of gets slippery, which really really sucks. But the good thing about this is that if you do not have extremely sweaty hands like me, or if you don't live like in a hot and humid area, then you are in luck because this coating is actually really good for you. When I'm not sweating or anything like that, the coating feels great and it is extremely grippy. So definitely keep this in mind if you are deciding to get this mouse. Also another very important thing about the coating, I'm sure you guys have already been able to tell, this thing is a fingerprint magnet. You don't really gather fingerprints on the textured surface on mouse 1 or mouse 2, but the rest of the mouse gathers a ton of fingerprints. It is very unfortunate, but honestly I don't really mind it all that much. It's not like I'm really looking at the mouse when I'm using it or playing in game or anything like that. And well, if you want to get rid of the fingerprints, then you can just give it a quick wipe down and they come off really easily. And I really do think that the coating of this mouse is better than the Zowie EC2 coating. The Zowie EC2 coating kind of just feels bad overall, whether you are sweating or not. While this one only feels bad when you are sweating profusely. So the outset AX has the edge there and as well as having the uh, textured mouse 1 and mouse 2. And now for the cable of this mouse. I would definitely recommend getting a replacement cable for this mouse because it is extremely stiff. As you can see the cable is barely even flexible and it pushes the mouse very very easily. You definitely feel it when playing in game and I really do think that a cable that is more flexible is needed for this mouse. The mouse does have a very nice stress relief that tilts the cable upward so that it will not drag on the mouse pad as much, but you still feel it dragging on your mouse pad and the cable does feel heavy so definitely keep this in mind if you are deciding to buy this mouse. The mouse does not come with extra mouse feet, which is pretty unfortunate because most mice nowadays are coming with an extra set of mouse feet, but these mouse feet are really really nice they glide really well this is the GameSense radar which is a soft control pad and i also tested it on my artisan hind which is a rougher surface and the glide was still very smooth with no scratchiness whatsoever on either pad so that is a huge plus the mouse feet do look extremely flat but if you look close enough they are slightly rounded which is nice to see and that is probably why they don't have a scratchy feeling at all. So I really don't think these uh, mouse feet need to be replaced for aftermarket skates. The speed of the mouse feet compared to other mouse feet seem to be average. So if you are looking for a faster glide on your mouse feet, then that's when I would recommend getting aftermarket skates for this mouse. But I really don't think that it is needed. As you can see right here, both mouse 1 and mouse 2 do have a lot of post travel when pressing down on either of them. I get no side play on either mouse 1 or mouse 2 when using the mouse naturally or in game. I can get side play like this if I'm using both hands but that is obviously not a big deal because it will not happen while you are using the mouse naturally. You do get a very nice crisp and satisfying click when pressing down on either mouse 1 or mouse 2 and surprisingly they do not feel mushy at all even though you do have a lot of pulse travel and well the, with the amount of pulse travel that they have I really didn't feel it when playing in game it didn't affect me at all and the force required to press down on either mouse 1 or mouse 2 is actually very very low. 
Mouse 1 and Mouse 2 are very light, which is very unfortunate because I really prefer much heavier clicks on Mouse 1 or Mouse 2. This is not a bad thing at all that they are so light because a lot of people like lighter clicks on their mice. These are just not for me though because when playing in game I would accidentally press either mouse 1 or mouse 2 a lot which is very unfortunate but that's only because I am so used to heavier clicks on my mice. Like I said earlier a lot of people love these light clicks but unfortunately they are just not for me. And now for the side buttons of the mouse. The side buttons of the mouse feel really really nice. You get a nice click when pressing down on either of them. I get no pre or post travel when pressing them and they do not feel mushy at all. They feel really really good and I really had no complaints when it came to the side buttons. They are a good size, they're positioned well on the mouse and overall they just performed really well so no complaints there. One thing I would like to note is that you can actuate the side buttons when pressing really hard on the sides of the mouse right there. You can probably hear it, I am actuating the side buttons like that, but the amount of force required to do this is very high and it is not something that would happen while you're playing in game unless you have some kind of gorilla grip and you're holding on to this mouse like if your life depended on it, you will not be actuating the side buttons by gripping the mouse normally. And now for the scroll wheel of the mouse. The scroll wheel feels extremely similar to something that is on a Zowie mouse. You get the loud scrolling sound. It feels very tactile, which I really really like. I don't really mind the loudness of the scroll wheel because I, you know, I have my headset on and I don't really hear it when playing in game or anything like that. So I don't mind it, but I could understand why a lot of people don't like this type of scroll wheel. So if you have ever used a Zowie mouse and you don't like the scroll wheel, this is like very very similar to that. The force required to press down on middle mouse button seems to be average compared to other scroll wheels. And I never accidentally scrolled up or down when pressing down on middle mouse button. I also never accidentally press down on middle mouse button when scrolling up or down. And also, scrolling up or down feels really nice and tactile like I said earlier. And you do get a nice click when pressing down on middle mouse button. Overall, a very solid performing scroll wheel that is very similar to something that is on a Zowie mouse. So now for the build quality of this mouse. This mouse is built like an absolute tank. I get no flex anywhere when stress testing this mouse. It is extremely solid, it feels of very high quality, and it is built extremely well. It honestly feels like you could hit someone with this mouse and knock them out very very easily because of how well built and solid this mouse feels. Like I said earlier, the only hiccup would be that you can press the sides of the mouse very hard to actuate the side buttons, but this is not something that is going to happen while using the mouse naturally, so I really don't think this is something you should worry about. But yeah, the build quality of this mouse is exceptional. So now, would I end up recommending this mouse? Yes, I definitely would. I really really enjoyed my time using this mouse. I really like this shape, and for anybody who loves the Zowie EC2 shape, you guys would love this shape as well. I really had no complaints other than the really stiff cable and the coating that became slippery once I started sweating a lot, but other than that, I really found no issues with this mouse. If you just swap the cable and maybe add some grips to it, then you are good to go and this is definitely one of the top wired ergonomic mice out there. But yeah guys, thank you all so much for watching this video, I really really appreciate it. I will now be playing some clips that I got while using this mouse, so stick around for that and I will see you guys later. Bye! That was close.
me. Fight. No way I miss that. How did I miss that? He's just gonna hide. Oh my god. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Uh, I should have. 